Welcome. I am Karen Yarhimilo. I am the Dean of the School of International Public Affairs and the Ali E. Stevenson Professor of International Relations. There are so many luminaries and fantastic people in this room, too many to name individually uh, in the usual acknowledgement. Let me just say thank you so much for being here today. After months of dreaming, brainstorming, persuading, fundraising, planning, programming, recruiting, and as you can see, renovating, <laughs> our big day is finally here. <laughs> Today, we stop imagining what could be and begin to see what will be. Today, we celebrate a community that has come together to do something remarkable in a remarkably short time. Today, we launch the Institute of Global Politics. Starting today, the Institute will bring together preeminent scholars and practitioners to address the most urgent global challenges we face. It is the living embodiment of SIPA's mission, our global ambition, and our commitment to evidence-based solutions and meaningful dialogue. Community members, faculty, students, we hope you feel at home here, that you will see this as a place to gather, to debate, to, collab to collaborate, and be inspired. And it all began with a conversation. I had been on the job as dean for less than two months when President Bollinger and I discussed how we could reimagine the school. We talked about this moment in the world, what's needed and what's not working, and where Colombia and where SIPA can fit in. At the end, he said, I want to introduce you to someone, and I have a feeling the two of you will connect over this. That someone was Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton. And boy, he was right. We hit the ground running right away, and as you might have picked up, neither of us is the type to sit down twiddling our thumbs. <laughs> Hillary, I cannot imagine having, I could not imagine having a more gracious, enthusiastic, passionate, committed, brilliant partner. What an honor it has been to get to share ideas with you, teach with you a class, build this institute with you, You've become such a great mentor and a friend. And we will get back to this. And if President Bollinger kindled the spark for the idea of what would become IGP, President Minou Shafiq helped it catch fire. None of you will be surprised to hear that Hillary and I have already conferred extensively with Minouche about this institute. No one is more aligned with our vision, and we are so grateful. She's not only the 20th president of this great university and the first female president, hoo -hoo, but also, I'm sorry, I just have to say, a professor here at SIPA. <laughs> a world-renowned economist, a policymaker, a pioneer in higher education who has spent over three decades in prominent roles at leading international and academic institutions. These include the London School of Economics, the Bank of England, the IMF, and the World Bank. It is my honor to welcome Inoush for the first time to her new academic home here at SIPA. Uh, 
Thank you so much, Karen, and um, thank you very much for accepting me among the, the SEPA tribe. And uh, it does feel a little bit like my natural home since I spent so much of my life in the international policy world. Uh, so I'm really grateful to be here. As I look around this room, I am filled with an overwhelming sense of excitement and optimism and urgency. I'm excited, of course, by the huge range of issues that the Institute for Global Politics will address. But most of all, I'm amazed at the incredible group of people that you have assembled to do it. There is a magic sauce that I've seen everywhere I've worked, which is you bring incredibly smart people together and you give them an interesting agenda and good things will happen. And so I wanted to start, of course, by thanking Karen, who's the Dean of, of the School of International and Public Affairs for her leadership of SEPA, and in particular, for the vision of creating the IGP, and it is so wonderful today to see that vision being turned into a reality. Well done. I also wanted, of course, to acknowledge see another SEPA professor <laughs> uh, and chair of the IGP Faculty Advisory Board, Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton. We are so fortunate to have your intellectual leadership. Everything you have done has been consequent, and I am convinced that having you here will ensure that whatever the IGP does will be consequent, and that is, uh, is so, so needed in the world today. To the inaugural Carnegie Distinguished Fellows, on behalf of the entire University at Columbia, I am so delighted to welcome all of you. What an incredibly impressive group, and we are thrilled that you, we, you have chosen Columbia as your home. I wanted to also acknowledge Trustee Chair Emeritus Jonathan Levine and Jeannie Levine, who have been so incredible, incredibly supportive of Columbia and this endeavor in particular, and our board co-chairs, David and Claire, uh, David Greenwald and Claire Shipman, who, uh, who you will hear from later in the program. I also actually wanted to acknowledge Louise Richardson, who's in the front row, who was a former colleague of mine when she was leading Oxford University and is now a new colleague in New York leading the Carnegie Foundation. You know, everywhere I go, and I can't count the number of times I've had conversations with people saying, we need better leaders, we need new ideas. And I think we all feel that, uh, not just in the United States, but everywhere in the world. And I was saying earlier in the green room, I think with, with Jack Lou, I know lots of young people who are deeply interested in politics, and yet they hesitate. And I hesitate in advising and encouraging them to go into politics, given the state of politics in the world today. Well, the IGP will be all about creating new leaders and new ideas to change politics, not just in the United States, but in the world as well. We will train and prepare the next generation of leaders for the roles in the public and private sector, and we'll produce research that helps shape the ideas for the policy making of the present. Big ideas like this uh, are well placed in a place like New York, where everything is bigger and better. <laughs> And I, I, there's applause for New York, yes, there we, there we go. <laughs> we are, after all, Columbia University in the city of New York, and we're proud to celebrate that distinctiveness and the advantages and give back in turn. This is a place where we care about deeply locally, but we engage globally, and the world always comes to New York and to Columbia. And the IGP vision is critically aligned with that reality of needing to have impact locally and globally. And I believe that's also what makes this place, this institute, so special. So I'm incredibly thrilled to be here. I think this summit, you've seen the program, gives you a flavor of what lies ahead, the caliber of the people who are engaging, the type of challenging issues that we are taking on. So welcome to all of you. You will hear more from the IGP. This will be a place that people will talk about, and it will be a place that will shape the world. So thank you very much, and I'll hand it back over to Karen. Thank you so much, Minush. We're so lucky to have you. 
When people ask me, how did IGP come together so quickly? I tell them, a wise woman once said, it takes a village. In this case, the village is the whole community of Colombia. From the president's office, to facilities, to communication and public affairs, to CUIT, to the entire SIPA team, to the University Senate, twice, to the, <laughs> to the provost office, to the faculty and board of trustees of the entire university, and more. This happened because everyone who believed that in this institute was an idea whose time had come. The truth is that it's only in this campus, on this campus, only in this city, could endeavor like this be possible. And it's thanks to the enthusiasm and generosity of so many, many people who are here today. When I became dean, we identified five pressing global challenges. Geopolitical stability, democratic resilience, climate and sustainable development, inclusive prosperity in macroeconomic performance, and technology and innovation. To address these challenges, we need academia to lead and to drive impact. When polarization infects our political discourse and corrodes our ability to enact meaningful policy, when future leaders have been allowed to cluster in silos instead of being exposed to new ideas, when the space to talk about policy, including foreign policy, is becoming narrower and narrower, leading to dangerous groupthink, we need an entirely new approach centered around three guiding pillars. Our first pillar is bridging the gap between scholars and practitioners. The problems we face today are complex and cross-cutting. We need all hands on deck and scholarship that really, truly drives impact. To achieve this, we're bringing top practitioners from around the world into dialogue with our scholars and students here at Columbia. And when I mean top, I mean top. And now among our inaugural group of IGP Carnegie Distinguished Fellows is a former head of state, a Nobel laureate, the former CEO of the world's leading technology company, a diverse mix of journalists, activists, thinkers, and doers. And I could go on and on. Even though our fellows may not have gone to school here, by the time they leave, I promise you, they will have Columbia Blue running in their blood. I know their time here will be unforgettable. They'll advance ideas they are passionate about, work side by side with students and faculty on subjects and policy reports and so much more, and I really cannot wait uh, for what to come. The second pillar is, as Minouche mentioned, thinking locally and globally. The pandemic underscored the fact that what happens around the world in neighborhoods and communities reverberates around the world and vice versa. We need to break out of the echo chambers and move beyond the US-centric sometimes approach that are limited, that have limited our ability to solve global challenges. And the fact that IGP is based here in the city of New York allows us to tap into its unique and unparalleled resources to bridge the private and the public sectors and to make Colombia the destination for world leaders who come to town. The third pillar is civil discourse. Let me tell you about Shabbat dinners I host on Friday nights. And hear me out, I promise it's going somewhere. <laughs> Picture a crowded table. No one agrees with anyone else about anything. Everyone is constantly arguing, debating, trying to persuade anyone and everyone they can. All the while, they're passing around food and enjoying each other's company. It's a beautiful chaos. And yes, I admit, I get occasional calls from the neighbors asking us to keep it down. 
This is the kind of atmosphere I dream of for IGP, a diverse range of viewpoints, impassionate arguments, friendships, and fellowship. And if one day the law school calls to complain about a noise to me, that means that we've succeeded. <laughs> so for our students to become effective leaders and citizens, we need to teach them not just how to articulate their own beliefs, but how to listen to others and engage with new perspectives. We want them to embrace complexity, to ask difficult questions, and to provoke deeper thinking. At IGP, we believe discomfort is necessary for growth, and that the unprecedented challenges we face will not be solved by status quo thinking. This institute is like nothing we've ever done before. We've navigated now, we're navigating uncharted waters, and we're going to get some things right. And if we're really doing our jobs, if we really are able to be bold and innovative as we aspire to be, despite our best efforts, we might not get it right 100% of the times, and it is okay too. But we're not daunted, we're excited, and I hope you are too. So thank you for being here to ring in a new year, a new era for SIPA. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your investment, your advice. Most of all, thank you for embarking on this journey with us. Buckle up, it's going to be a thrilling one. And since I joined SIPA in January as a professor and chair, I'm sorry, and since she joined SIPA in January as a professor and chair of IGP Faculty Advisory Board, Secretary Clinton has inspired us to be more ambitious, bold, and creative. Coming to faculty meetings and even chairing a search committee. She even has her own signature coffee called the Hillary, and I'm not making this up already. <laughs> And this is on top of co-teaching one of the largest and most in-demand classes at SIPA. And yes, I am trying to explain to her that it's not normal for students to applaud when the professors enter the classroom. And, <laughs> and I'm under no illusion that they are applauding clapping for me. And I, they still do this every time. And Hillary, the promise and the potential of IGP is so incredible thanks to your tremendous enthusiasm, energy, vision, and partnership. What an honor. Everyone, please join me in welcoming IGP Faculty Board Chair, Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton. Oh, thank you so much, Karen, and thanks to all of you for sharing this launch day with us. We are thrilled to finally be at this point, and I join uh, Karen in thanking each and every person associated with the university, uh, people who have already uh, shared our vision and contributed uh, to the Institute, uh, every one of you. Uh, I am deeply grateful, and I, I think that as Karen has uh, enthusiastically described. Uh, this is a journey, uh, but we want it to be a journey you all take with us. We want your ideas, we want your suggestions, we want your participation. And let me start by thanking Manoush. She will be um, formally inaugurated tomorrow, but she has already uh, been so active in reaching out to the entire uh, university community. And it is a great honor for me to be part of this community. When we met with the faculty, oh, about a week or two ago, um, I confessed that I had not been teaching in a classroom for 50 years. Once I said that, I thought, why did I say that? <laughs> I mean, it sort of stunned me. Um, but it has been a joy, especially with Karen, to be back in the classroom. and. Uh, to have uh, a very large class of undergraduates, graduates uh, from not just SIPA, but across the university, uh, very international um, student uh, body, 
and to have the chance uh, to interact with them. In addition to the amazing Carnegie Fellows that uh, Karen previewed for you, and some are going to be with us uh, this afternoon, we also selected 35 students to be student scholars um, associated with IGP. And we had a chance to meet with all of them, and it was just, uh, an, again, an extraordinary uh, set of uh, conversations. You know, working with Karen um, is like working with a force of nature. Don't, don't let all this talk about how I showed up and things began to happen, fool anybody. Um, she has been on a mission, and it is a mission I gladly signed up for. Um, our friendship, our working relationship is really a microcosm of what we want this institute to achieve. People with different experiences and backgrounds coming together to learn, expand their understanding of our world, and engage with opposing uh, viewpoints and even values. You know, I've had the opportunity over the years to uh, work with many um, smart, impressive women uh, like Karen uh, in foreign affairs and domestic policy and diplomacy, you'll hear from some of them, as well as national and international security. That's why it was very important to us from the beginning to be intentional in including women and women's voices and women's interests in this work uh, as we began. Not as an afterthought, not as an add-on, but integrated uh, in the Institute from the beginning. Now, way back in 2001, after a lot of work uh, by a number of us, uh, the United Nations passed a landmark resolution affirming women's crucial roles in peace and security. Sadly, it is a resolution that remains unfulfilled and often totally ignored, even unknown. Because advancing the rights and full participation of women and girls is the great unfinished business of the 21st century. So one of the goals of IGP is to ensure that issues about women's rights and roles, power and voices are integrated, uh, and they really are part of the DNA of this institute. We are gathered in order to help think about and use the extraordinary brain power of our faculty uh, to help us solve or at least participate in solving some of the most complex challenges facing our world today. As Karen uh, described, you know, whether we're talking about geopolitical instability and the rise of autocracy or climate change or developments in technology that are outpacing uh, the human brain by, you know, magnitudes, uh, we have to have everybody at the table, and that includes women fully participating. Uh, and it's important that we model that. We're going to model that for future policymakers, uh, diplomats, journalists, business leaders, uh, everyone who passes through not just SEPA but the university. We want to work and make connections that will have an impact uh, as they go forward uh, as well. You know, part of the great attraction to me uh, of doing this work uh, with Karen and with all of you um, is that as a policymaker, somebody in the Senate for eight years, Secretary of State for four, um, there was often such a dearth of expertise and knowledge available to us in the positions that I held. Uh, we didn't always know what the latest thinking, the latest writing, the latest innovative ideas uh, were in academia because we didn't have a pipeline. We didn't have a connection. I mean, if I read an article that I saw someone was working on something that was going to affect my, you know, Senate uh, leadership. I would try to reach out to that person, but we had no real systematic way, and there was no place that was easily available to us to try to figure out how to make uh, that uh, pipeline of ideas and people more real. It was all ad hoc. And certainly in the State Department, we had incredible expertise from foreign service officers, civil servants, political appointees, everybody uh, that I had the pleasure of leading. Uh, but again, there were ideas, there was research that was being done that could have informed our decision making that we didn't connect with. So we want to do everything we can to lift up the work of the faculty here to make it not just more available, but more impactful. And through the programs of uh, the Institute, we want to help our students 
understand how they too can be more impactful you know, as they begin a career and uh, go out in whether it's the public or the private or the not-profit, non-for-profit uh, sector. So we couldn't be more excited. We're thrilled to have uh, this uh, day of uh, extraordinary discussions that's about to start. So let me uh, thank you uh, for being here and please be our ambassadors, be part of what we're doing and give us your ideas because we are truly building the plane as we're flying it and we want it to have a lot of velocity, a lot of altitude, and never come down. Thank you very much. <laughs>